it, but I said it first. So in a sense, I take it to the first. That's why my fans in my show scream and take me to church. Uh, no suit and tie, but baby, I go to work. Don't do it for the money, but that's one of the perks. Hello and welcome to Folsom Field. I am Matt Smith for Mile High Sports. Thank you very much for tuning in. Well, Colorado drops their senior day matchup to the USC Trojans. 38 to 24 and they fall the five and six overall this season and two and six in conference play with those two wins coming over Cal and on the road at Oregon State. Uh, very disappointing for the Buffaloes but at the same time there was a level of encouragement in the fact that Colorado once again did not fold and continued to battle to the very end and credit to this Buffs team because it would have been easy to do that. Many things not to like uh, with today's performance quite frankly in the first half things were really ugly except for Colorado's defense who came up with stop after stop and gave the Buffalo's offense opportunities to do something with the football but unfortunately could not capitalize and they go down 20 to nothing in the first half Montez was not very good in that first half of play he had shown some really good things and strung together back-to-back -to -back weeks of solid play uh, heading into today and then missing his receivers he looked like he was pressing a little bit, throwing the ball a little high, maybe even a little hard at times, and put his receivers in some bad spots. Devin Ross got rang up across the middle. Obviously, as a slot guy, you know that's going to happen to you, but Montez put that ball a little too high. Would have been a first down. Ross got popped, dropped the ball, and then, of course, Shea Fields uh, got upended and had his feet taken out from under him, slammed his head back against the turf because the ball Steven threw was a little too high. So he just wasn't sharp today, and it was the wrong time for him not to be sharp especially on senior day and considering this is a huge game because had Colorado won they would have secured their bowl eligibility a ton of credit has to go to this Colorado football team for battling back the way they did in the second half they could have easily hung their heads uh, especially after that second blocked field goal at the beginning of the third quarter when Colorado was down at the USC 22 it was a fourth and three they'd already gone for it on fourth down on a fourth and nine from the USC 40 in the first half but this time McIntyre once again elects to kick another low kick from James Stefano and another block Colorado gives up another touchdown they go down 27 to nothing and at that point it really seemed like this game was pretty much all but over Colorado fought back an impressive performance Juwan Winfrey starred had over 160 yards receiving five catches I think two touchdowns a big game for him nice to see after we had heard so many good things about him last season then of course the ACL tear he comes back uh, has played somewhat of a role this season, not significant, more of a backup role. Fields goes down and really Winfrey had himself a nice game tonight, but uh, some good things from the Buffaloes in the second half, but also some head scratching coaching decisions uh, in this one and some missed opportunities. And that was something that, that was the only thought I had in my head before this game. And it was certainly something that, um, it was really the only thought that had occurred to me before the game. I had no prediction. It was, you cannot miss opportunities like you did against Arizona State in the first half and like you have, for the most part, all season long. And they did. They missed those opportunities. The defense gave them big stops, gave the offense big stops, and the offense couldn't convert. And once again, a frustrating loss for the Buffaloes. Yes, USC is a much better team than Colorado. Certainly, they're the class of the conference. I think they wrapped up the Pac-12 South tonight. But... This Buffs team has been in pretty much every game this season outside of the Washington State game. So a very frustrating year for fans, a year of missed opportunities and culminating in a senior senior day performance for, you know, uh, with 21 seniors, I think, in this class. And, you know, Phil Lindsay leading the way, of course disappointing way to wrap things up at Folsom Field in 2017. The chance for this senior class to leave a legacy is on the line in two weeks. Of course, a very late bye week next week for the Buffaloes in the 2017 season. Coach McIntyre saying that normally that late off day can be a little strange for, for a team, but he says this team he thinks is going to really take that and use it wisely. Utah and Colorado are two programs, in my opinion, that are in very similar situations at the moment in time. Uh, currently, I believe Utah was losing to Washington State at the moment. I would imagine that they both enter that game five and six, needing another win to secure bowl eligibility. So certainly a lot on the line for the two Pac-12 Mountain schools. 
this is no doubt been a frustrating year. The coaching decisions at time have been head scratching. The lack of execution has, I think, been even more head scratching. Um, it, it's certainly been a year full of frustration for the Colorado Buffaloes team. They've done some good things, and there's certainly some things you can carry over to that Utah game, including the way that they fought late in this one. However, you have to be concerned about Colorado's ability to go on the road and win that game. The only time that they've won on the road this season was when they went and beat Oregon State and barely did that. It took two really good drives from the offense to secure that win, and they only beat them by three points. So the, you've got to be concerned about the final game of the season. And I asked Afalabi Laguda, Steven Montez was asked after the game, what is your approach for this bye week? And Foe told me, He's going to empty the tank this week, and I think that's pretty much going to be the sentiment from the rest of this CU football team. You have to leave it all out there because if you want a chance to secure a legacy and leave one and become the first team since 0405 to go to back-to-back -back bowl games, you've got to lock in and dial in this week, and it would be easy seemingly uh, to lose focus, but Colorado really, really pushing to make that bowl game, and that is certainly something positive that you can take away from this one the will and the desire to win and to continue getting better is still there. We saw a lot of the young players uh, tonight come out and make an impact in this game, guys who will be returning for next season, which is really good news. Um, but the demeanor was, was in the right place. They did things right on and off the field to prepare themselves for this week. They got beat by a better team. They had a chance to make it a closer game, certainly, and squandered those. But that's pretty much been the story of 2017 on the whole. Colorado's going to have to dig deep and find a way to come out and give Utah their best shot in two weeks if they want a chance to make it to a second straight bowl game for the first time since 2004-2005. As always, we really appreciate you tuning in here on Mile High Sports. Make sure you follow along on Twitter, at RealMattSmith, that's Matt with one T, and at Mile High Sports as well. Thanks for your time. I'll see you in Utah.